Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive. Today, we're tackling the L&D pivot point. It's about changing how we think about fixing problems, moving beyond just defaulting to training. And to guide us, we've got some really insightful excerpts from a book by Guy W. Wallace, a real leader in the L&D world. And this isn't some pie in the sky theory. Wallace actually gives you a practical framework to use so you can really analyze and solve those performance issues, you know, effectively. All right. So paint the picture for us. Say there is a company, sales are down, productivity is in the tank. What's the first thing people usually jump to? Oh, I've seen this a thousand times. Almost always it's everybody needs training. Right. Exactly. But here's where Wallace throws us a curveball. He says, assuming training fixes everything is like, well, putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm. You're hiding the problem, not fixing it. He even says, and this is a quote, a request for L&D to solve a performance problem should be suspected. Bold move, right? Definitely makes you think twice. So uh, you're saying sometimes more training isn't the answer. That's kind of hard to wrap your head around. How do you get people on board with that? It's a shift in mindset, for sure. Instead of fixing people, you got to analyze the whole system. Right. Like what if the problems in the process itself, the tools they're using, even the work environment plays a role. Just like a doctor wouldn't prescribe meds without a diagnosis, right? Mm. Same goes for training. Got to understand the problem first. Makes sense. So it's not about saying no to training outright, more like taking a step back, seeing the bigger picture. Exactly. It's about thinking like a performance consultant. And that's where this thing called the EPPI fishbone diagram comes in. EPPI, Enterprise Process Performance Improvement. It's a visual tool, like a mind map, to help analyze all the things that impact performance. Okay, so break down this fishbone diagram for us. How's it work? Imagine, well, a fish skeleton, the head. That's the performance problem you want to solve. Branching out from the spine are these 12 key performance variables. And this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to guess knowledge and skills is just one of those, right? Bingo. Yeah. Wallace says, hold on, don't just jump to training. We got to investigate LL 12 of these variables. They cover the process itself, the environment, and us human factors. So it's not just about what people know or don't know, but the whole context they're working in, right? Plus their own, you know, individual stuff. Exactly. Environment, that could be the tools they've got, the physical workspace, you know, the company culture. Yeah. Then there's the human side, motivation, attitude, what they're capable of. Tons of stuff. So how do we actually USE these 12 variables with this fishbone diagram? So it's like what those detective boards, you've got the crime in the middle and we're pinning up all these suspects, the variables to find the real culprit. Love the analogy. And as you start digging into each variable, you might realize, hey, it's not that people don't know enough. It could be a bottleneck in the process. Roles are fuzzy. Maybe even their software is so old, it's slowing them down. Now I see why this whole framework is a game changer for L&D people. We get so fixated on the training part, we miss all this other important stuff. 100%. Wallace has this example. Really drives it home. Company pours money into training their sales team on some new software. Sales still tank. Sounds familiar. Let me guess. The software itself was the problem, not how to use it. You got it. Thing was so clunky. No amount of training could fix its basic flaws. They had to scrap the whole thing, start over a huge waste of money. Ouch, yeah, that's got to hurt. Makes you wonder how many companies are doing that, throwing training at a problem that needs a whole different solution. More than you'd think, sadly. That's the beauty of this EPI approach. Yeah. Helps you avoid those expensive mistakes because you're tackling the right problem from day one. Okay, so say you've used this fishbone thing, looked at all 12 variables, you've found what's really causing the performance issue. Then what? That's where the pivot point comes in. The big decision. What do we do about this? All right, walk me through it. What are the options at this pivot point? Basically two paths. You can keep going with instructional design, but T only if your analysis shows it's truly a knowledge or skills gap. That might mean training programs, workshops, online modules, that kind of thing. So training is not out the window completely, but it's not automatic anymore either. Exactly. Now, path number two is where it gets cool. If you find it's the process, the environment, human factors, anything, yeah. you can see those knowledge gaps, that's when you pivot away from just training. You got to look at broader performance improvement solutions. Okay. So like what, what do those broader solutions look like in reality? Depends on the problem, right? Could be streamlining a process that's a mess, hmm. bringing in new tech, better communication, sometimes even changing the company culture itself. This is making a ton of sense, but I got to be honest, it's also a little overwhelming. This EPI thing is a lot to take in. Totally understandable. It's a lot to process all at once. The good news is Wallace uses these real world stories from his own consulting work to show how it works in action. 
He's got the quick pivot, the data-driven decision, and parallel paths. Now you're speaking my language. I love a good story. Let's dive into those and see how this EPPI framework actually plays out. Let's do it. So in the quick pivot, Wallace gets called in for what seems like, you know, a simple training need. But the deeper he digs, he finds this big old process flaw. Like, that's the real issue. Classic misdiagnosis. I bet he had to ditch the training plan and help them fix that process instead, huh? Bingo. He realized training people on a broken process, that's useless. Like giving someone directions with an old map, they'll never get there. Okay, that's a good way to put it. So instead of making a training program, he helped them make a new map, a better process that actually gets them where they need to be. Nailed it. And the results. Mm. Amazing. Just by fixing that process, performance shot up, no extra training needed. Wow. See, that's what I'm talking about. Got to look past the surface, find the root cause. What about the data-driven decision? What's the story there? That one shows why objective data, hard numbers, are so important. Wallace was working with this huge organization. Performance was all over the place, different departments. You know the drill. They were dead set on company-wide training to fix it. Oh, I know the type. Spend a fortune on training without even really knowing if it'll help. Right. But Wallace, he's like, hold up. Let's get some data first. Surveys, performance reviews. He even watched people work. Turns out it wasn't that they didn't know enough. It was a lack of clarity. Who does what? Who's accountable? Interesting. Not a training problem, more like an organizational structure problem then. Exactly. People stepping on each other's toes. Confusion about who's responsible for what. Chaos. Inefficient, frustrating, the whole nine yards. Oh, tell me about it. I've been there. Unclear roles and responsibilities. It's a nightmare. Happens all the time. Yeah. And it shows you got to look at the whole system, not just individuals. So what do they do? Ditch the training entirely. Based on the data, Wallace is like, nope, we're restructuring. Help them clarify roles, new job descriptions, even move some people to different teams. Now that's a pivot. Probably would have been way easier and cheaper to just do the training, but it wouldn't have solved the real issue. Exactly. Sometimes the best solutions mean we got to challenge what we think we know, be ready to make big changes. All right. So we've got the quick pivot, the data-driven decision. What about parallel paths? When's it right to do training and those other performance solutions at the same time? Parallel paths is perfect for showing how training can be part of the answer, but rarely the whole thing. Wallace gets called in to help this company. Customer service is a mess. Long waits, inconsistent service, the works. Ugh, the classic customer service headache. I bet they figured just train the reps more, right? That's what they thought. But Wallace, he's like, hold your horses, let's look at the whole picture. Analyze the customer service process, watch the reps in action, got feedback from customers and employees. And I'm sensing it wasn't just a training issue, was it? You know it. He found that, yeah, the reps could use some brushing up on best practices, communication skills, all that. Yeah. But the process itself, clunky, outdated, way too complicated. Double whammy. So what do you do about that? He went for a two birds, one stone approach. Address the skills and do the process at the same time. They made a training program for the reps, but he also helped them streamline the whole customer service process itself. New tech, redesigned workflow, gave the reps more power to solve problems on their own. Smart. Tackling both those things at once makes for a much stronger solution in the long run. Exactly. And the results proved it. Customer satisfaction went up, wait times down. The reps felt more confident, better equipped to do their jobs well. Everybody wins. Okay, I'm really seeing the power of this L&D pivot point now. It's not just about being a training whiz. It's about being a performance consultant, figuring out the real problem and recommending the right solutions, whether it involves training or not. 100%. You're expanding your toolkit, your whole way of thinking to become a more strategic partner in your organization. And I love that Wallace uses these real stories, brings the whole thing to life, makes it way easier to see how we can actually use this stuff in our own work. Seriously, those stories are gold. It really makes you realize you need a framework like that fishbone diagram to get it right. It's not always easy to see past that initial training request, you know? digging deeper, finding the real cause of the problem. Oh, for sure. Takes practice, and you got to be curious, willing to ask those tough questions. And that makes me wonder, what happens when you DO find those other solutions? Like, it's not training. It's redesigning the process or changing the whole company structure. How do you convince the higher-ups who are so set on training? How do you get their buy-in? It all comes back to the data. Remember the data-driven decision? Mm. That story, it proves how powerful cold, hard facts can be. When you show them with numbers they can't ignore, 
that it's not about lack of training. It's the process or roles aren't clear. Yeah. That's how you get them on board with something different. So no gut feelings. Got to bring the evidence. Yep. It's like making a business case for anything else. You got to be convincing. Right. Especially if you're asking them to invest time, money, maybe even change the whole company culture. Data is crucial there. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of this EPPI framework. Mm -hmm. It gives you that structured way to approach the problem. Yeah. Analyze, find the root cause, come up with solutions that are backed by evidence. That's like having a roadmap, right? No more guessing games. You've got a system to find those really effective solutions. You got it. And the best part? Anyone can use it. Doesn't matter what industry you're in, what your job title is, L and D, manager, even the CEO. Mm. Understanding this stuff makes you a better problem solver, plain and simple. Better for you, better for the whole organization. This deep dive has been honestly mind blowing for me. And I'm betting our listeners are feeling it too. We've covered so much from those knee jerk training requests to how important data is for making the right call. And let's not forget those 12 performance variables, the pivot point and being open to solutions beyond just training right. Mm, absolutely. If you're hooked on this L&D pivot point, you have to check out Guy W. Wallace's work. His book goes way deeper, tons more tools and examples, everything you need to become a real pro at this stuff. Couldn't agree more. It's a must read if you're serious about making a difference in your workplace. So as we wrap up, one last thought. Next time you see a performance issue, remember what we talked about today. Don't just assume it's training. Ask questions, look at it from every angle, and be open to trying different solutions. You never know what you'll find. Sometimes a fresh perspective is all it takes to make a huge impact. It's about moving beyond just fixing problems. It's about making things better overall. Love it. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the L&D pivot point. Until next time, keep learning, keep asking questions, and keep making those breakthroughs happen. 